if you hit that subscribe button, that notification bell, you're going to be missing out on videos and free prizes and raffles we have coming up. Hey friends, have you seen that new feature on uh, YouTube here where it's called time stamping and it allows us creators to go down here and create this timestamp so that you can more quickly access maybe only the information in the video that you want. So like for example here, if I wanted to see close up, go here, boom, moves me right to that part of the video. It's allowing us for uh, the ability to go back to longer content and still kind of serve you uh, for the shorter, quicker stuff. So look for it in all our videos in the future and let's get started on this one. I needed to make a video for my customer. We got a set of CBRF3 carbs in here and I had promised him I was going to show him what was wrong and, and what we discovered. Uh, it's a track bike and uh, he's going fast on the thing and can't afford to have any leaks or any issues just as you can't go down the highway. So what I thought I'd do, since I had to do it for him anyways, I was gonna show you some really quick things to check and things to look at uh, in this video that you can uh, use when you're working on your own carburetors or things you need to get in your skill sets. Because if you skip these things, believe me, you're gonna have problems. So why don't we get to work, hop on in here, and let me show you all the things we discovered that uh, weren't right and need fixed on the CBR carbs. First thing we identified uh, where the actual fuel was pouring out from. In the deep dive video, I show the rig, how I tested, how I set it up, and all that good stuff, the tools used, and so on. But let's just, in this uh, sneak peek uh, preview, let, let me show you where the actual leak was coming from because it was pouring and dangerous. See how I can move that by hand? Shouldn't be able to do that. Let me show you again what I'm doing from a distance. So I'm just grabbing that and wiggling that back and forth. Really takes two hands to do that. I'll put a link in the top corner here. We got a bunch of videos using the old uh, Suzuki method actually on how to find leaks. Uh, really thin fluid, oil, fuels, antifreeze, brake fluid, doesn't matter. They're pretty cool. But in the deep dive video, we will uh, actually go ahead and show you how to find them on your carburetors. Super useful. Let me give you a little sneak peek and show you uh, the actual leak pouring out. Oh, look at just pouring out of there. Now that, my friends, is how you truly diagnose a leak. Uh, you check out that, that deeper video for just all the details and whatnot that goes with this. I always like to clean the outside of the carb first, and when we were kind of doing our dust cleaning, we noticed the CV cap slide was cracked, and here's a good close-up of that, but uh, that definitely caused you some problems. Actually split right through there. Look inside that choke and see how that cylinder on the end here, look at this, okay, that one. So this would have been hard to start on this cylinder and it almost looks like this is the side where the carburetor's cracked. I wonder if this got dropped or banged up or, I mean there's just so much play and slop in there that it wasn't engaged in. It was definitely not doing... Uh, not doing its job here. So in the deep dive video I go into showing you how to straighten the bracket and obviously hook it up correct but what's really common with these uh, multi-cylinder choke assemblies is it's common actually that there's a missing uh, spacer and bracket here when people tip the carb upside down I don't know if it dumps off rolls off the bench but I, I see this far too often so I can't stress enough make sure to use your parts fish to know that everything's there. The next problem we ran into, you're going to see, is we actually had some different brands of jets in there. And this is this is a big issue. And I'm, I'm going to a real deep dive. I'm going to show you a little sneak peek of what, what I'm talking about, what it looks like. But you can't mix up uh, like DinoJet brand and other, uh, and other brands of jets because they don't necessarily use the same orifice measuring system, if you will. And that simple number of like 140 in this example, it is not all the same. So... Uh, big, big, big no-no you can see here. feel like I've lost my butt on jobs early in my career not knowing that that was the case. Uh, and then even on the, the pilots, we had a difference in uh, one to another from this little S symbol. But uh, attention to detail and recording uh, all these sizes, it really allows you to not make that mistake of overlooking it. If you just throw them all in a, I see a lot of people just all put them in a common bin to wash them or clean them or whatever method you're going to use and now you have an also uh, you're keeping that that data with that cylinder so I think it's really important in this micromanagement but hey that's how we do it at Hot Wrench 
Next, uh, we see this quite often when people don't remove all the parts. And you can see from all the varnish, uh, you know, that's in these carbs, those little tiny holes are going to get plugged. And if, if you don't know what they do or don't understand it, you're really going to want to take our full course. But uh, that's why we go into the deep dive. Take everything out, clean it all, be thorough. Once we got the carburetor split, um, we actually saw that there was reused parts that had been broke before, and, and this is a big no-no. I mean, when it comes to fuel leaks, it's just too much risk to, to try and use silicone or to just shove something back in. You can actually see where this T is missing a chunk of it, and that O-ring just can't uh, seal against that. So, word to the wise, don't risk it here. So in that deep dive video, like I said, we're going to show you, you know, how to replace those O-rings. I don't, I don't just mean on like how to put an O-ring around that shaft. I mean like the fitment, I what you can do to protect yourself, how to, because it's a lot of work to get there. And so you don't want to put them on and have them leak. So uh, the brand is really important. The size is really important. Like I said, these are not easily available for most carburetors. And these are the ones that give people a lot of grief to where they junk a carb or even junk a bike so we got you covered we will show you how to do it with no issues and uh, get that back on the road all right my friends there you have it there's a couple of quick tips here for you uh, if you're hopefully you're a subscriber of the channel if you're not you're missing out on notifications of videos like this coming your way for free and then for uh, all our members you get to look forward to the deep dive of this uh, to really show you how to choose those o-rings and so on like I talked about so we're super stoked about uh, really I feel like we're at that point where we're we're kind of making everybody happy so we got the quick content for people that just need to get in and out and we've got our community for the real deep dive that are really looking to get those uh, certifications as we build them through how to wrench and to uh, get all that information either do this for a career or to do it for yourself so uh, we dig the direction we're going super excited and we want to give a shout out to Seb for choosing uh, how to wrench to do his carbs uh, cool fellow I had a couple uh, conversations on the phone before he shipped them out here and we got a list of parts for you to get off your uh, spare track bike so we can get this set in shape and uh, ready to rock and roll so uh, hey like always we're just trying to be helpful in this community in this space and uh, trying to have a great time while we're doing it so if you haven't done so yet like share subscribe all that good stuff make it a great day and keep wrenching